question is, why are we building a titanium? Well, the reason we're building a titanium is very simple. It's the best handling motorcycle with a V-twin in it that has ever been produced. The original designer of this frame here is Eric Buell. I'm sure that everybody's familiar with Buell, Buell Racing, Eric Buell Racing EBR. He was an engineer at Harley-Davidson when he designed this. And still to date, it's still the best handling frame. Um, the reason, so we want to talk about the reasons why it handles so well. And the reason it handles so well is because, number one, the geometry, uh, 29 degrees of rake. The, this area of the frame has zero flex. The whole backbone section is actually two pieces of square tubing, one that runs through here, another piece that's cut on a, a big angle right here that's welded in, and then these side plates, which are uh, pressed sheet metal, welded over the top. And it makes this whole section really, really stiff all the way through the frame here. And because of this V, this V helps, uh, makes this whole area really stiff. So, taking the flex out of the frame makes a huge difference because when you're going around a corner and this swing arm, you know, the brake's leaning over and the swing arm's being torqued on, the swing arm doesn't it doesn't shift and the back wheel doesn't come offline. Uh, a good reason why it doesn't get wobbly in corners, when you go into corners really hard on this brake, it squats in and it stays extremely stable, um, which is a great attribute to have if you're going to want to go fast around corners. Of course, in a straight line, the bike's as stable as hell. I've had this particular frame, or this bike over here, actually. Mm. Let me point the camera over here. Sure. This particular bike here, I've had up to 150 miles an hour, um, and it just rode fantastic. I was actually just shocked, because you normally can't achieve those types of speeds unless you're on a sport bike. So when I say that this bike can really handle like a sport bike, I mean it. It's no bullshit. So, coming back to the frame. So one of the things, uh, another great attribute of this frame is the fact that it's rubber mounted. So it isolates the engine from the frame as far as vibration goes. So we have a rubber mount up front which we use in polyurethane, not rubber, but a polyurethane. Then we use the standard rubber mounts in the back because they're more than adequate for the rear where everything pivots. And what keeps this drivetrain lined up, of course, is these tie, tie rod ends for the top of the motor and the front of the motor here which moves the whole drivetrain one way or the other. So when we build this bike we actually line up the whole drivetrain with the front wheel and make sure that it's perfectly centered. And by doing that the bike just tracks perfectly. So these are the attributes of the frame. Stiffness, uh, geometry is the bottom line. Stiffness and geometry is why this frame handles so well. One of the things that uh, we looked at was we went to, we knew the frame was great, right? And, and the reasons why the frame was great. But then I wanted to put the best suspension on the bike that money could buy. So we went to Paul at Race Tech in Corona, California. And Paul has been building high performance suspension for MotoGP race bikes for a long time and really knows his stuff. So, what I want you to uh, pay attention to here, if you can, if you look at the swing arm on a on a standard uh, on a standard Harley Davidson, this swing arm is either level or above the pivot point on the frame. That's a bad thing because what you actually want when the bike's loaded with the person sitting on it, you want this swing arm below the center of pivot. The reason for that is called positive swing arm travel. The reason you want that is because the geometry is not going to change from being below until slightly above. The geometry is going to stay very stable because when you move the swing arm down and all the way up, it believe it or not, it changes the trail in the front end of the bike. So, 
Number one, we want this, the, the rear end of the brake to be as stable as possible. And the way to achieve that is to have positive swing arm travel. So we've got that. So the next thing is, we obviously made sure that we've got plenty of ground clearance, which on this bike has seven inches. As you can see, by the bottom of this foot pedal that's been ground away, this is a soft touch point on the bike. So when you go around corners, you want your foot peg to touch first, nothing else. The reason for that is because uh, this will swing up a little bit and give you plenty of notice to slow down in the corner or you know, you're going too hard in the corner. So, suspension. Why is the suspension so critical? Well, the suspension is so critical because it's all about keeping the tire on the ground. Now, what we want, the faster the bike goes, the more compliancy we need. That is, as we're traveling down the road and the tire hits a bump, naturally the suspension comes up. Now, the faster that, that suspension can come back down and keep that tire on the pavement, the better off we are. That's called compliancy. When you keep the tire on the ground, that's called compliancy. What that allows you to do is have a lot more traction to the road surface. So, we're riding along at 80 miles an hour and everything seems fine. And then if we were to take the bike to 120 miles an hour, 140 miles an hour, 150, if we don't have the suspension set up correctly where it keeps that tire on the ground, what will happen is the tire will hit the first bump, come up in the air until it hits another bump, may come down a little bit and hit another bump. So the majority of the time, the wheel's actually off the ground. And what happens in under braking, when you actually apply the brakes, you, you don't have any compliancy because your tire is not on the ground, even under braking, because the suspension and the valving in the suspension is not keeping that tire on the ground. So this is why suspension is so critical on a motorcycle that can do above 70 miles an hour. Um, and it matters, even at 50 miles an hour, this matters. Because in a lot of stock motorcycles, the suspension is not set up to keep that tire on the ground. They, it's good enough for the manufacturer, good enough for the public, but you can, you can see a huge difference, say between a Harley Davidson, stock Harley Davidson, and a sport bike. There's a huge difference just at 60 miles an hour in the handling of those two vehicles. And the reason for that is suspension and geometry. It's all in suspension and geometry. So under braking, I can slow this bike down a lot, lot faster than I can a stock Harley Davidson V-Twin because the suspension is keeping the tires compliant to the ground. So therefore, I have more traction, more rubber on the road, so to speak. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now, I can brake from 100 or whatever miles an hour if I want to and pull it down to 60 or 50 and it's a lot safer. It's a lot safer of a motorcycle because of that. And same thing in a corner. If I'm going around a corner and I'm leaning way over and so I've got a small contact patch on the tires to the ground, now imagine if I have suspension that doesn't allow my tires to stay on the road, how much traction do I have now? I've lost, you know, it's just amazing the difference in suspension on keeping you safe and being able to ride your motorcycle. So this is why we're building the Titanium because it's just a far superior handling motorcycle, braking is far superior, everything about it is superior. And this is why I wanted to build it, um, because it's a rider's motorcycle, and I've had a lot of experience riding this type of motorcycle, and it's the best V-twin that uh, has ever been built, period. So now that we've talked about suspension, let's talk about the braking that we've selected for this bike. We got with Hayes calipers. Hayes is out of Ohio. Hayes um, makes a lot of braking components for a lot of different companies. And they've decided to come out with a monoblock caliper, which is what this is here. Okay? 
what that means is the caliper is one piece. It has, these have been bored out here and these plugs put in, but the caliper when it squeezes this rotor right here, it, it doesn't flex out. A lot of calipers that are bolted together and made out of billet aluminum, they want to flex. When the brakes are applied, they flex open. So you lose uh, feel and the ability for braking power. What we've got here with these brakes, now that we're with our suspension, we're keeping our tire compliant, we want really good brakes because they can be applied. Because if I was to put these brakes on a front end that had lame suspension on it, we'd have no compliancy between the tire on the road, we'd have no traction, and the front wheel would just lock up really easy because the contact is not there. But with this suspension, you can have fantastic brakes because the tire is staying on the road. And under braking, it's staying on the road. Okay, and, it, and we're gaining tremendous amounts of traction between this tire and the, and the road surface. So we've gone with a, um, a floating, full floating rotor, which is made by Brake Tech, which is a MotoGP equivalent rotor, which Brake Tech does supply ro these rotors right here to the racing industry. These brakes are what you call a radial mounted brake. They bolt straight through to the bracket here to the lower end of the fork uh, and it gives no flex whatsoever. A actual mount is a standard Harley way which the bolts come in from the side here, not as good, this is better. There's a reason that all race bikes use this radial mount calipers. Same thing goes for the handlebar controls. These handlebar controls that were selected from Nissan, they're actually made in Ohio from Nissan, um, <coughs> is a radial mount brake and clutch mechanism that we're using. Very, very, very good. Very, very good quality. Really high-end quality. Um, yeah, I can't fault the stuff and it works fantastic. So we've got triple trees that go along with our front end. These particular fork tubes uh, are actually made by Owens, but the internals of these forks is actually Race Tech, and we're working with Race Tech uh, in making the whole frame complete. I mean, we're, we're, we're making the triple trees. Race Tech is actually going to be making these out of tubes, and we already make everything else inside the fork. These triple trees, of course, we're making in house, and as you can see, these triple trees are extremely, extremely rigid the way they clamp the fork tube because you don't want any flex in those triple trees at all so this is part of the geometry and the handling of the bike um, if you look up here we have external gas shocks here which are fully adjustable there's a little screw in here we can adjust the rebound uh, with this shock and uh, the preloads can be all be adjusted slightly, so just for adding for a heavier rider or a lighter rider. Look at the gauges. Uh, we make the gauges right here. I mean, sorry, the, the gauge housing. The gauges we're using are autometer. They're extremely accurate and a very good reason. As you can notice, this speedometer can go to 160 because it will go there. Um, the reason I made the gauge mounts is because when you sit on the bike, the gauges are right below your eye level, so when you're riding on the on the freeway, on the roadway, your eyes have to slightly shift, just ever so slightly down to see what's going on with the gauges, and you want that. You don't want to be looking like this and moving your head, you just want to flick your eyes down slightly to see what's going on with your speed as well as your tachometer as far as shifting. So that's the reason we did that. So the reason, the, this motorcycle has nothing to do with looks. Everything about it is to make a V-twin as best as it can be. And I don't care what components I, uh, I'm using as long as they're the best that we can get. Now you look at this exhaust system. This exhaust system is just a um, test exhaust system right now to, to run the, the chassis and so, so forth. This is not the exhaust system that we're going to be running in production. The exhaust system that we are going to be running in production is being tested right now on another prototype. Uh, and Yoshimura out of uh, Corona, California is building titanium and stainless steel exhaust systems for us. And of course, right now we're in the middle of 30,000 mile compliance testing with the California Air Resources Board for that exhaust system being a brand new product. Um, 
So that's what's happening there. The drivetrain that we're using causes SNS, Baker transmission from front to back, hydraulic clutch. Uh, the inner primary is Delcron. The outer primary we're getting cast ourselves because there's not a good one on the market. The only ones they make are from Taiwan and they suck. Um, rear fender is made by Russ Wernermont. Fuel tank comes from uh, drag specialties that we're using. Um, and we modify the fuel tank. It takes 4.2 gallons. The oil tank is just a standard oil tank that's in production in the marketplace. We're using a three-phase system. We're using wire plus wiring harness. We're using uh, Deutsch connectors, of course. Um, we'll be using a Hayes caliper on the rear of the bike. Right now, we've just got this particular caliper on for testing purposes. Um, so that's that's pretty much it the, in the nutshell of what why we've designed the bike the way we have. Um, because I just want the, the best performance that we can possibly get out of a V-twin, as well as reliability. And the rubber mounting gives the bike its reliability because it isolates the engine from the chassis, which is what, what causes damage is vibration. Um, and that's exactly why Harley-Davidson invented, and uh, well not invented, but that's why Harley-Davidson uh, manufactures rubber mounted motorcycles for V-twins. Great. And maybe just to recap um, broadly, what just to recap everything as far as what what sets this, this motorcycle apart, just just again, one more time. So what sets this motorcycle apart mm -hmm. is the geometry, number one, the manufacturing of the frame and the stiffness of the frame. Number two, the positive travel on the swing arm with really, really good suspension front and rear. With the, with the best braking known to man. Radial mounted brakes, flo full floating rotors, very, very good braking. This bike is also going to come with a full fairing in the front, as well as ABS saddlebags, so that it will be a bagger that will handle just as good as a sport bike. So it's a sort of a, a heavy duty cruiser that handles like a sport bike. And this is, this is the whole reason behind it. And something that you could sit on and ride for 800 miles in a day, because I've done it. And it's fantastic, it's just awesome. Once you get, once you ride a bike like this and do a couple hundred miles, that's it. You don't want to ride nothing else if you're into V-twins. You don't want to ride any other V-twins.